Hello everyone, I'm Aronima from Netonata and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these Tunisian crochet slippers. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a fairly easy pattern in that it um, uses only Tunisian simple stitches and uh, it's just the construction which is uh, just this part in the front which uses short rows. Probably you could call it a little uh, on the intermediate side maybe but any adventurous beginner would be able to make this. And um, in this video I'm going to make uh, the entire slipper and show you how to shape it and how to make the base and everything. This is going to be a tutorial for a US size 8 slippers. Uh, that's what this uh, mannequin foot is wearing. And I am going to go over the construction. I'm going to go over uh, this front portion in detail. And so let's let's get started with what you need to make this. So I, I, I made this using a uh, stroll tweed fingering weight yarn from knit picks this is superwash merino wool and little nylon and some tweed and i really like how it feels and how it sits on my foot uh, it is very easy to use i do see a little bit of splitting sometimes but uh, it was easy to get used to it i the more i work with it the less it happens so i guess it just needs some practice and i used uh, two colors uh, this is down heather and this one is rabbit heather this is a leftover from uh, this after i made the slipper and you'll need a, a tunisian crochet hook a 3.5 millimeters hook that is what i've used so I usually use a larger hook, uh, at least two sizes larger than what's recommended for the yarn for Tunisian crochet. But with this project, I found that if I do that, the project, uh, the slippers turn out to be very stretchy and they keep slipping off my foot. So for that reason, I wanted a dense fabric, uh, something that doesn't stretch too much. So I used a smaller hook. Um, I used a 3.5 millimeters hook and I, I really like how this worked up. It's a nice dense fabric. You can see that there is hardly any space in between the stitches. It it still stretches. It It's not that it doesn't stretch at all, but not as much as if I had used a larger hook. The only downside of using a smaller size hook is that your project will curl and that is that is normal and we don't care too much about that in this because of the way so even if it curls it's joined in the back so it doesn't matter it won't it won't curl up it's not like a flat project so it's not a problem if it curls uh, you will also need a uh, regular crochet hook i used a three millimeter a 3.25 millimeters hook and that's for making this crab stitch border over here uh this border and um that is optional you may or may not want to do it uh but i did and i really like the finished look of it so that's for that and you need a tapestry needle um a scissors a pair of scissors so that's pretty much all you need to make this Now let's quickly talk about the construction of this. Um, I first start with making one side. So this is made uh, sideways. So you make this one side and then uh, on top of that you make this section, the front portion, and then you make the other side and you complete that. So this is one fabric all the way from here. It goes like this and all the way till here and then we make the base we make the base uh, over here you can see that the base is made separately so it's not it's built on that fabric so it's not made separately and joined so you, it's joined as I as you go so you make this all the way till here till the heel and then on the side and you see that it's tapering over here that's to give it a little bit of a shape at the back so it fits properly. And once that's done, we just give it this border. So I'm going to start making this now. Here in this video, I uh, I mentioned that I'm going to uh, show you how to make this in US size 8. But I have other uh, sizes uh, all the way from kids to all adult sizes um, and the written instructions for it on my blog. So feel free to check those out if you're looking for other sizes too. So now here, I'm going to start with 
a chain 22 with this yarn because that's that's my that's my base uh, I could switch uh, you could use whatever colors so the good part about this uh, this slipper is that it's very easy with the color change to see how to construct this front portion and you can you can use pretty much any combination of colors you could make it in solid color or you can use any combination of colors to make this if you make this one first it will be very easy for you to understand how to construct these short rows to make this front portion and once you know that then it's just about figuring out what pattern you want on it and uh, you can you can make a large variety of different designs on it so let's start with chain 22 so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two and this is going to be a foundation row of twenty two stitches so i'm going to make the foundation row stitches in the back bumps here and um I have a separate tutorial which explains uh, different ways of making the foundation row so uh, you're welcome to check those out I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below and uh, so just for this one I'm just going to make my foundation row stitches in the back bump here This is how it's looking at the end of the foundation row and I'm going to add uh, 31 more rows on top of this so it'll be a total of 32 rows so foundation row plus 31 rows uh, of Tunisian simple stitches so I'm just going to make two neat rows of Tunisian simple stitches here so here you can see that I'm just going to make a row of Tunisian simple stitches this is really really easy you just have to keep making Tunisian simple stitches rows until you have a total of 32 rows including the foundation row so this is how it's looking after foundation row plus one two three four five so a total of six rows and you see that it's curling quite a bit and um, that's normal that's normal for this project because we're not using a much larger hook and that is intended that is uh, the reason for that was that I didn't want this fabric to stretch too much I tried it actually I tried it with a larger hook and uh, I just felt that it was uh, there were too many gaps because uh, I wanted to make a snug fit if I didn't it kept coming off of my feet and if I made it a snug fit uh, with uh, a smaller hook then it would curl and I felt like it was okay it was okay for it to curl because that gave me the kind of fabric I wanted to build for the slippers so I'm going to go ahead and make a total of 32 rows and I'll see you on the other side of this video and then we'll and then we'll work on the on the short rows that is um, that is this portion so I'm going to complete this one side and then I'm going to start working on this portion so I'm completing row 31 here so that's foundation row plus 31 rows I'm going to stop here because we're going to change color at this point so here we go so change color and then we'll make one row with this color uh, so you can see here I made this portion and now I'm going to make this one row with this color this is just so you can see the beginning of that front portion So one row of simple stitches uh, this one is not a short row so I'm just going to make one row of simple stitches just like I was making the previous ones and that completes the forward pass and then the return pass 
and now after this we're going to change color at uh, the beginning of every row so we're just going to um, just so you're aware this is so that uh, you can see this pattern easily so that you can build this pattern so here you can see that with every row we've changed color so you have to stop at the point where you have two loops on the hook and pick up the other color and yarn over pull through those two that will help with uh, that is how we change color at the beginning of the forward pass so you see how this is curling i just wanted to show you that this is normal this is okay for it to curl so much now for the next row these will be short rows so row 33 um, so start with color this color and uh, there this was 22 uh, simple stitches for this row we're going to make 20 simple stitches so that's the first one will count as this one and then 19 more so one two three sixteen seventeen eighteen and nineteen so you'll see that you'll have two stitches remaining at the end and so these two stitches remain at the end and we just let them be so this is the forward pass and for the reverse pass uh, return pass we're just going to yarn over and pull through two we are not going to chain one you could chain one at that point and then make your row like that that is also correct but i've seen that um, in my experience this one uh, makes a cleaner join or a cleaner uh, next section so you can see over here uh, there isn't much space otherwise it, it, it gets uh, you can see little gaps when you make that chain one but if that chain one works better for you um, that's fine too it's not incorrect it's just a different way of doing it so uh, if you're doing it my way then yarn over chain uh, then yarn over pull through two uh, since that since the beginning of that return pass so don't chain one in the beginning of the return pass so just complete that return pass And we'll stop when we have two loops remaining on the hook and at this point we're going to change color now for the next row it will be a total of 18 simple stitches including that first stitch so that's one and then 17 more so two three four five 16 17 and 18 so we'll leave the last two here you can see those last two you can just leave them as they are and then yarn over pull through two again not chaining one in the beginning just yarn over pull through two all the way to the end of this And we leave two loops on the hook and change color. Now at this point, this is row 34 done. Now row 35, we need a total of 16 stitches. So this one, two, three, four, 14, 15 and 16 and this is the last two that we're going to leave and yarn over pull through two all the way till the end stop it when you get those two loops on the hook and then change color at some point make sure that you Unentangle your yarn because of the color changes. You're uh, crossing them every after every row, and this can get very messy. So now that's row 35 complete. Now row 36. 
uh, we need a total of 14 so that's one two three 13 14 so you'll see that with every row we are leaving out two stitches the two last stitches uh, of the previous row so we're reducing the stitch count by two with every row so then yarn over pull through two that's And that's 14, 14 loops uh, or 14 stitches. And with the next one, it's going to be 12. So one, two, three, 11, and 12. Same thing, yarn over, pull through two. then change color and then the next row we need 10 so that's row 38 again I have um, the written instructions for this pattern on my blog uh, the size that I'm making in this video is a US size 8 but I will have uh, other sizes all the way from kid sizes to adults uh, on my on my on my blog so feel free to check that out So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Again, leaving out those last two stitches, and then yarn over, pull through two. And changing color again. So with changing color, you see that if you interlock it properly at the back, it is barely visible. So it's nice and neat. So you don't have to worry about how it will look at the back. So the next row is row 39. We need a total of eight. So that's one, two, three, four. Just make sure your yarn doesn't split sometimes it does so just be patient and fix it four five six seven and eight again let's split just a little here eight and yarn over pull through two all the way to the end of this return pass and we stop at two loops now so the next row is going to be slightly different so let me show you where we are uh, we just made this section here all the way until this point and now we're going to make this one row which is going to be uh, all of the 22 stitches so change color and this is the bit which is slightly tricky you just need to make sure that you're finding your stitches uh, properly and you're getting the exact the number of stitches that need to be in this row so you start with so we need to get 22 so we start with making simple stitches so that's one two three four five six and then seven so that's first stitch six simple stitches and then pick up this one vertical bar so you can see this corner vertical bar the one that we did not chain uh, at so just pick the front vertical bar there again you could pick up both you could pick up the front and back but i like to just pick up this front vertical bar yarn over pull through that is a total of eight so two four six eight and then we're going to the row that was before that and pick up the vertical bar from there so that's the second to last and then that last one which where we did not change just the front vertical bar 
so that's a total of 10 so 2 4 6 8 10 and then keep going so the two stitches that we left on each row we're just going to pick those up so the vertical bar and then only the front vertical bar of that edge there and then this vertical bar and then this edge and then another vertical bar and then the edge and this vertical bar and edge so make sure you're picking up two stitches from each row prior to uh, this where we, we, we skipped stitches in the end from the short rows so here this one and here and then this is the one which that was the last uh, row from the from this panel here so we're just going to pick up those two as well and in this one we're going to pick up the last two vertical bars here at the end so we're not going to pick up only the front one we're going to pick up both and that's how it's looking so there should be 22 loops on the hook so 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 22 that's 22 loops on the hook and now um, we will yarn over and pull through two we will not chain one here so the reason i'm doing that is so that i can get this little u over here um it uh, if i chain one it elongates a little bit and it wasn't um very the, the shape wasn't as nice um so just make sure that you yarn over and pull through two and not chain one at this point and just keep doing that to complete the return pass and we will change color here so that was 22 loops on your hook at the beginning of that at the end of the forward pass so here we just completed this section all the way until here where this row is a full length 22 uh, stitch row so now we're going to make the next section which is this one where we start with short rows and then we increase count so here we started with a long row and we made shorter rows we decreased by two stitches on every row and now we're going to increase by two stitches in every row so let's do that so this is now row 41 so we're going to repeat these previous rows in reverse order so we start with row 39 that's what we're going to repeat we have we need a total of eight loops on the hook so seven more stitches so that's one two three four five six seven and eight you'll see that this length matches the length of the, the number of stitches in this row here matches this row exactly now yarn over pull through two loops one all the way to the end of this and then change color and now in the next one you need that would be a repeat of row 38 so we need 10 loops on the hook so that's one two three four five six seven and for the eighth one you just pick up that last vertical bar the the front vertical bar there Eight, and then two more so we pick it up from this row so nine and ten you see this row matches this one exactly then yarn over pull through two one then change color and for the next one there will be 
12 for the next one there will be 12 loops on the hook so we did 10 in the previous row now 12 so that's 10 from this one and 2 from that long one that we had made earlier that was from row 40 so that's 2 4 6 7 8 9 10 and then 2 from that row 40 11 and 12 again this row matches this one yarn over pull through two so i think this is really really simple once you get the hang of it you just um this this section is a mirror image of this section along this line and uh, it's just it's very simple to do i feel once you understand how short rows work you just have to make sure that you find the right stitches when you are working them up so the next row will be 14 i think so one two three four five thirteen and fourteen and then yarn over pull through two then color change and next one will be 16 Next one will be 18. So it's one, two, three. 18, and then yarn over pull through two. The next one will be 20. And then yarn over, pull through two all the way. then change color and this one will be a full 22 stitches so I'm going to go make pick up 20 from this previous row and then two from the row 40 that we made and then this one that is 21 and then for the last one again now you see that there there's the last stitch from this row that's not the one that we want to pick up we want to pick up the one from this row the one that the i'm sorry so you see that there are two two edge stitches here uh, of that same color so you don't want to pick up the one from this row you want to pick up the one from this row the row 40 so that was the one where we had uh, not done a chain one so it's it'll be slightly difficult to see but you can see over here the two vertical bars of that one so I'm going to pick them up together so front and back vertical bars of that last stitch edge stitch of row 40 
and again I'm going to yarn over pull through two no chain one here then change color so this is how we complete that one full section so we decreased the number of stitches on each row here so here we decrease the number of stitches on each row by two stitches and then we increase the number of stitches on each row by two stitches so that completed that section there so if you see over here in this that is starting from here all the way to till this one here so that entire section is what we just completed and going forward you just just a repeat of this entire thing two more times so we just do the same thing over here in the center and then the same thing over here so that's a repeat that's done three times uh, i'm not going to show you how to do the next to because it's exactly the same so you just uh, start with making rows by reducing two stitches on each row and then you make that center row like the row 40 that we made and then you keep increasing by two stitches um, the written instructions explain exactly how to do that and you can go back go back to you need to go back to row 33 that was this one and just can uh, and just repeat that all the way till here so you do that two times and um, you will complete that front portion of the slippers, the full, full thing. So I'm going to make all of that and I'm going to see you after I've completed that front portion. Just make sure that you are making, uh, you're not chaining one over here uh, in the center and that you're picking up the two vertical bars. I know it's a little hard to see over here. Uh, but they're there you can find them um, and it will be a very clean look if you're able to pick up both the vertical bars from those edge stitches even though we didn't chain one but if it is if it is really hard to do that then go ahead and chain one and um, that should be fine if it's if it's too hard to do this but if you can that will give you a nice little curve in the in the front and it'll be easy to uh, it'll be easy to shape the the slippers so uh, that's about it i'm going to see you after i've completed this front portion so here it is um i just complete so i completed this was section one this was just a, a section of tunisian simple stitches and then moved on to section two which is this part the front portion and um, this is I completed that as well and I have now stopped at this point which is row 80 is done. So just make sure um, I wanted to point out that with row 80 you will again start making a chain one at the beginning of the return pass because we're just going to continue making section three which will be very similar to the section one. So if you see here I had left the video around this part here uh, so I we had made this together and uh, after this I just repeated the instructions two more times so from from this row from the first short row all the way till this one which is uh, the the row that has all the 22 stitches so just make that one more time and then two more times so that completes this and now I'm going to move on to the to section three where now we don't need to change color anymore so this yarn uh, i can actually cut this off and uh, weave in ends and i'm going to now work with uh, the other the color one the base color yarn um, and here so at this point we just need to now make uh, rows 81 212 uh, and they will all be simple stitch rows so just rows of simple stitches just like we did in section one just, uh, we'll we'll mirror exactly that on this side and uh, the number of rows will match exactly so the number of rows that we had over here in section one it will be the same number of rows that we will have here in section three
So we start with a chain one here. So now every row will have a chain one. The, at the beginning of the return pass, the only reason we didn't chain one um, in this section here, so we could get that nice little uh, U sort of shape. So uh, otherwise, there'd be too much fabric over here, and uh, it'll be it'll bunch up. But it's it won't be too bad if if uh, I think I mentioned this earlier. But if this is difficult to do with just um, without the chain, then you can go ahead and add the chains. But I like to do it without. But uh, at, in section three, you will make a chain at the beginning of the return pass for every every row. And because you're not changing color, you just completed the return pass with the same color. And I'm going to continue making the rest of the rows just like this. So here is how this is looking after completing sections one, two, and three. And um, I blocked this, so this is sitting flat. You don't really have to block it. Uh, it's completely up to you if you'd like to. But uh, I have not, I have blocked it and this is how it looks. This is how you should expect it to be. And now after this, now we're going to make the base. So this is, this is this part done, the front portion done and then this side done. So now I'm going to make the bottom here, the base. So this part is what I'm going to start constructing now. So I'm going to start from uh, joining here at the front and then we'll work our way to the back and all the way here and then up the back here. So this is what I'm going to do next. So to make that uh, base, I'm going to start with placing two stitch markers at rows 53 and 60. So that is basically find that center row, which was uh, like, if you don't want to count, I'm just giving you a sense of what we're trying to achieve here. So this is that center row with 22 stitches. So this is sort of the middle of this entire uh, piece that we've made and you count one two three four rows to the to the side and three rows to the side so a total of eight so one two three four five six seven eight is um, eight rows is what we will use so you put a stitch marker here and a stitch marker here so this is row 53 and row 60 if that's what you uh, if you want to use counts so now i'm going to Take this yarn so this is what's left over for me so i'm going to take this yarn and i'm going to attach it with right side up i'm going to attach it in this edge stitch of the where we put the first stitch marker so that is the first loop on our hook and uh, we've just attached the yarn and i'm going to pick up a loop in every edge stitch until we reach that next stitch marker so that. so you'll have a total of eight stitches on your hook at this point I'm going to go ahead and remove these stitch markers now. Don't need them anymore. So now I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. So no chain one. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way till the end. And then I'm going to remove this from the hook, insert my hook in the next edge stitch here. So this is where we started. So I'm going to insert my hook in the next edge stitch, pick up that loop again and pull through. So that completes that one row. 
So it's, it actually is a total of nine stitches that we're using. So if you see that this and this row, these were sort of the joining stitches. So we're, we're sort of joining as we go on both sides. So we joined here and we joined here. That's the reason we didn't do a chain one. So if we chain one, that would become a stitch of its own. But if you look at this, this is like a join as you go with the stitch. It will make more sense as we make more rows, but I just wanted to put it out there. And so this one is uh, joining as we go with this side and that one is joining as we go on that side. So now uh, don't forget, this is very important. We're going to chain one at this point. So for the purpose of this space, we will count this as six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. The f these here and these this one here is not really uh, counted. So just make sure that you're picking up six loops uh, as you go on each row. So there'll be six loops here. So one that's on the hook. You'll pick up six and then there'll be one joining. So total of eight eventually. So that's one. So it's three, four, so two, four, five, six, seven, and the eighth will be the join. So you find the next edge stitch here and yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two, all the way till the end. And then remove that loop from the hook insert the hook in the next edge stitch on this side and pick up that loop again and pull through so now you've to you've got the join on this side the join on this side and there's these six stitches in the center so that's one two three four five six those are the ones that will work and so we just make sure that we chain one and then pick up six loops after that so this is a total of seven this is i don't know it's probably a little confusing in the beginning but if you understand what's going on here it's very easy to see so these are seven loops on the hook so that's seven stitches in the center and then we have one here and one here there we will join that'll be join as you go so it sort of you're working right in the middle of this fabric that we just built and it's equal number of stitches and rows on the side so you can see that when we are joining on this side and this side the join as you go as i call as i'm calling it here the because of the way we constructed this it's easy to see that you will always join with the same colored stitch or edge stitch on both sides so this join will be with this color here and this join will be the same color here so you know for sure that you're working in the right in the middle of the fabric if you um, if you make a different pattern here it is hard to see um, so that is the reason i recommend making this pattern first to practice so you can see exactly what rows um, what stitches you need to match with and so because we started at the center so if you see that the fourth stitch is one two three four fourth stitch here this coincides with the center row here this is the middle of the full fabric that we made so this is the center and we're constructing equally uh, the base equally on both sides and uh, and uh, we'll continue doing this all the way till we reach uh, we'll continue doing this so this is the bottom we'll continue doing this all the way until we reach this heel over here and the number of stitches will match exactly because they're the the two sides have the exact same number of stitches. Uh, so now I'm going to attach this here. So this is sort of the join as you go on this side and then yarn over pull through two. And then remove that loop from there. 
insert your hook in the next edge stitch and pull through so that is joining as you go on this side and that's joining when you go as you go on that side so I'm going to keep going and do this for the uh, for until until I reach the heel here just make sure that this join that you do on the side and that last stitch on this side they're both with uh, rows of the same color so you will not um, you will you will have equal number of uh, stitches on both sides or rows on both sides well it's okay if you mess up a little bit it won't make a huge difference but you might find gaps you might have to make some adjustments to make sure that your base is working out properly if you do so i'm just trying to give you all the information that you need to be able to make this easily See, this is how it's looking. It's nice and clean, both sides, the edge is nice. Just make sure you don't forget to chain one. So I'm going to make a little bit of it and I'm going to come back and show you how this looks. So there's, um, well actually, there's one more tip that I wanna give you. Uh, if after, so, it will be easy to match these rows until you reach this point where the color change happens and after this you don't have any color changes so uh, you it will be the same number of stitches on both sides so you should be okay but if you feel uncomfortable uh, continuing without knowing where you are uh, or if you need some extra aid what you can do is you can use your stitch markers and put them after every say five rows so one two three four five you can put it over here on this side and do the same thing on the other side say one two three four five and put it over here and so um, when after you've completed this uh, the base until here then you need to make sure that uh, after five rows you're joining with these two uh, stitches over here and then you can continue doing that uh, until you are comfortable you can just keep moving these stitch markers by five stitches or ten stitches however you like so uh, so you make sure that you have the right number of um, you, you, so you're joining with the right stitches uh, so I'm going to now to stop the video I'm going to make the rest of this until the heel until here and then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the back so here I am now where I have completed the uh, the bottom half uh, the bottom part of the base where so this is we started from here and I've gone I made all of this all the way until this point where the heel is so now I'm going to make this portion which is at the back of the foot so here you can see that I have I have 53 rows of simple stitches in the base. This is going to be one less than um, where you put your first stitch marker. So we put our first stitch marker at the 54th row. So you'd have 53 rows of these stitches, uh, of uh, 53 rows in the base all the way until the heel. Now we're going to continue making the back. So we're going to join this panel here with this one here so the only difference now will be that here we were joining with the edge stitches but here we'll start joining with the simple stitches that are on these sides here so I'll show you how that's done so working on row 54 now so it's the same thing this is the loop on your hook and then you pick up six it's one two three four five and six and this is just my tweed yarn okay 
so that's six and now for that join I'm going to pick up this first simple stitch here that way and yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through two all the way till the end just like before nothing different here and then here now remove this loop from the hook and pick up this simple stitch on this side and pick up that loop and pull through so that completes that the first row for this back so it's like we're working 90 degrees we're working in this direction now we're working upwards here we were working the bottom and now we're working the back uh, so you just have to keep doing this until uh, you reach uh, a certain point where we'll we'll uh, do a little more shaping so here as so again don't forget to chain one so chain one and i'm just going to continue making these uh, simple stitch rows by joining them with the simple stitches on the side one more thing that i'd like to point out here is that the number of stitches in this panel here and here the sections one and three of this panel are exactly the same so you will not have any trouble matching stitches on both sides they'll be the exact same number of stitches on both sides so we just continue doing this until row 69 So here's one more thing that uh, I like to do. I like to put a stitch marker on row 54. So that is the first row I know that I joined with this, uh, where I joined with the side panels um, or the sides of the panels uh, with the simple stitches. So that way I don't have to keep count. Uh, it's hard to see from here uh, which row is where we started the back from. So just another tip that might be useful. And this last stitch is sometimes hard to see but it's there it's because if the join becomes a little tight in the beginning but uh, it's there just make sure that you don't miss that it'll get better as we make more rows off uh, of the back You have completed uh, row 69, so that's 54. And if you, uh, so with the stitch marker, it's easy to figure out. Uh, I was, this was row 54, and just count here, and I am on, um, I just counted and I'm on row 69. So that's done. Now for row 70, so let me just show you quickly. If you look at the back here, uh, we've reached this point, and then this tapers, so this gives it a little shape at the back. So this doesn't uh, slide off the foot so we're going to do that part now so for row 70 uh, this is the stitch on the hook and we're going to keep it that way uh, and then we're going to decrease we're going to pick up the next two stitches the vertical bars of the next two stitches and yarn over pull through so that's one decrease and then two simple stitches so one and two And then another decrease so that would be pick up the vertical bars of the next two stitches and yarn over pull through and then the join on this side and then yarn over pull through two 
all the way till the end and join on this side and chain one so that reduces the stitch count by two so here instead of picking six like we did pick up six but we ultimately had four uh, loops that we picked up on the hook before the join so now the next row is row 71 and we're just going to do uh, this is the loop on the hook that's the first stitch and then we're going to pick up four so that's one two three and four and join And then yarn over, pull through two, and then join on this side. Then row seventy two is we decrease and then another decrease. We again reduced by two stitches and then join. Here. And the next one is row 73. So we just have this loop on the hook and then two simple stitches. and then a join and then for row 74 just this loop on the hook and then decrease and then we will join so there are no more simple stitches left so we're just going to join with this edge stitch here pick up the two vertical bars there and there and then yarn over pull through all the loops on the hook and then join on this side Pick up the vertical, the two vertical bars, that edge stitch, and join, and then chain one. So that completes the back. You can see that it's a nice tapering uh, shape here. So this uh, it this won't slide off easily from your foot, and that's what the back here looks like. See here, just right this part. So the only one thing now left here is making this crab stitch border. So here, this is how it's looking. This is how it's looking. We made the top panel first. We started from one side and then we added this one, the, the last one, and then we made the base by starting from this point, the toe here, walked, worked away to the heel and then the back. So it's a fairly simple construction, I feel. Uh, it's just, uh, if you understand how to do, how to join the base and how to do this front, the toe, the part here, it's, it's very, very easy to make. Here is the uh, slipper now complete with the with the back, the base complete, the back is done. Um, and the only part that now remains is making a crab stitch border. So here is the slipper. So um, started here, completed the base all the way like this and then came to the back, completed this portion and we've reached here now. This, uh, the border is optional. So you can see that the, uh, the edge is fairly neat and you are welcome to just leave it as it is or you could add a different border i like the crab stitch border so i added that and i'm going to show you how to do that but you're welcome to either leave it out or add a different border whichever you like 
this point we're going to switch to a 3.25 millimeters hook and I'm going to just make a crab stitch border all around. So for that, just insert the hook in the previous stitch and not the next one. Yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through. This is sort of like single crochet stitches going backwards. So here this is how it's looking with the border and uh, I like that it gives it a nice clean edge but um, as I said before it's completely optional you can choose to not do it or you can make another border whichever you like so this is how it's gonna be and this is the other foot so this is how they are looking um, they are interchangeable you can wear any slipper and any foot and uh, quickly going over the construction again, there is, we started with what this one side and then made this and then this side and then started, added the base from here all the way to the heel and then moved on to the back and it's a little shaping over here and then I added the crab stitch border. So this is for a US size 8 foot. Uh, I have 9 uh, instructions for nine different sizes uh, available on my blog so you're welcome to check those out and the written instructions for this size also are, will be there so I'm going to add a link uh, to it in the description below. So this one more thing I wanted to talk about is adjustments uh, to this pattern. So this is uh, this is supposed to be a snug fit and I found that if you uh, if you're making this for your foot and you find that it's uh, it's a little too tight then it is possible to just add a few rows to the first and third section over here to elongate this this will most likely remain the same for your foot if you are making the if you're picking the size and you're using the instructions for your size but it may be that uh, this is shorter than you like so it is possible to add a few rows over here and then adjust the base but if it is longer than what you'd like then uh, it might be a little harder to uh, to adjust so if it is smaller then you can add a few more rows on this side and this side and it will work out just fine so I just wanted to mention that that it's possible to do that uh, I have done that in one set that I made uh, not this one but a different one when I was um, writing the pattern and it worked out just fine I just had it to uh, I just added a few rows on the first and third section and um, I was able to elongate the slipper without having to unravel the whole thing. Um, so that's that's about it for this pattern and um, I will have this. So this is the first of uh, my slipper series. I have a few more slippers that I've made and I'm in the process of writing patterns for. So if you'd like, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and uh, when I post the patterns for the remaining uh, slippers then you'd get a notification for those so don't forget to hit the bell button. Um, I also have a lot of uh, Tunisian crochet and crochet patterns on my blog and tutorials on my channels so feel free to check those out and thank you for watching. Bye bye.